good evening everybody and welcome to the fourth session of our one stop perio real me stealing phenytoin correct so you know now which of these drugs causes gingival enlargement is for ac inhibitors b is beta plus alpha blockers c is central sympatholytics there is a drug called as methyl dopa in this category which is the only safest drug for pregnancy they break that sink how can they do that either they increase the proliferation or they decrease the collagen degradation okay there's something called as merin's classification we follow that to recall the patient <laughs> Do you enjoy learning without distractions? Download our app now. Good evening everybody and welcome to the fourth session of our one stop perio. So the topic for today's session is drug induced gingival enlargement as uh, Dr. Palak already told you that this is not, you know, a lecture type of a class. This is more of, you know, how to learn the subject. I'm not, uh, you know, explaining things here. I'm helping you to learn the subject. So this is a very important topic. This is asked as uh, both long answer as well as a short answer question. Now, irrespective of how many marks it is asked for, these are the four subheadings that you have to have to write. So first is which are the drugs commonly associated with drug induced gingival enlargement can anyone tell me any drugs that you know okay i love which are love. yeah yes real me stealing phenytoin correct okay so the drugs which are commonly associated are antiepileptics immunosuppressant calcium channel blockers phenylalkanamide and there are few drugs which are you know um, not completely proved to cause gingival enlargement but in few patients they do cause now let us see your recollection from second year pharmac so which of these drugs do you think is not an antiepileptic anybody yes metformin can tetra tell me where is metformin used anybody yes it is used in the treatment of diabetes now so you know now which of these drugs causes gingival enlargement what you need to understand is each mm -hmm. drug has its own representation so they definitely ask you about the characteristics of drug induced gingival enlargement now you have to remember this picture whenever the characteristics are asked okay this is a picture of a 3 year old who is on a calcium channel blocker for a really long period of time i mean since the birth because of congenital heart disease here if you observe that uh, the interdental gingiva the marginal gingiva and the attached gingiva are affected you see the obvious color difference right in the alveolar mucosa and the gingiva that's been enlarged of course to account to the size you see that uh, there is increase in the growth and the contour has changed so these are few characteristics that you can write for any group of uh, you know gingival enlargement that is asked what do i mean by that is like say for example the question is specific to how does a phenytoin gingival enlargement look like so this is something that you can write for phenytoin for calcium channel blockers for immunosuppressants and the rest of it now let us understand the details of it there is a variation in interpatient and intrapatient we'll get to this later when i'm discussing you the case that will be better to understand now why i use this picture is see i told that this is a picture of a 3 year old kid which means this prevalence always remember of drug induced gingival enlargement is more in children when you compare to that of adults now you saw the picture of anterior gingiva remember that the predilection is in the anterior gingiva you saw the obvious changes like you know changes in the color contour and size of course now enlargement is first observed in the interdental papilla onset of this um is seen within 3 months of drug consumption there is an increase exudate spontaneous bleeding on probing now this is a very important uh, topic i mean important point both spontaneous bleeding on probing as well as uh, the last line let's start with spontaneous bleeding on probing can anyone tell me any other condition where uh, you know there is spontaneous bleeding on probing anybody leukemia okay something very very important 
Okay, it's seen in scurvy. Okay, that is one of the clinical signs uh, feature that you have to write um, in scurvy. That topic also will be discussed later. But just remember, spontaneous bleeding on probing, not uh, spontaneous in gingivitis, but in scurvy, like, you know, the moment you touch it with a probe, you can see a lot of blood crashing out. Okay, next, um, the last line is bone loss may be present or absent, but there's definitely association with attachment loss. What does this mean? See, here in this picture, you can see there's a lot of gingival overgrowth, right? So when you keep, keep a probe here, you'll see that the pocket depth is somewhere around 7 to 8 mm. So that doesn't mean that that amount of bone is lost, but it rather means that uh, that amount of gingiva is overgrown. So that is what this line means, that there is an attachment loss, but there is, uh, you know, the bone loss might be present or absent. So just remember this picture and you will be done to write the characteristics about any group of drug that is asked. Now, while explaining this picture, I told you that the patient was on calcium channel blockers. So, do you know any other antihypertensive drugs? Alpha blockers. Mm -hmm. So, why don't they cause gingival enlargement? Yes, ACA inhibitors. Calcium channel blockers. Okay, so now here's a cool mnemonic to remember it. See, antihypertensive drugs are basically classified into first line and second line. So the first line of drugs are A, B, C, D. A stands for alpha blockers. B, beta blockers. C, calcium channel blockers. D, diuretics. And then you have second line of drug, again, A, B, C, D. A is for AC inhibitors. B is beta plus alpha blockers. C is Central sympatholytics. There is a drug called as methyl dopa in this category, which is the only safest drug for pregnancy. And then D is direct renin inhibitors. Now, why did I tell you this is tomorrow if a patient comes to you with a calcium channel blocker, you know, induced level um, overgrowth, you should also know the drugs that you can ask the physician to substitute. Secondly, there are eight different subcategories of antihypertensive drugs, but only calcium channel blockers causes gingival enlargement. Now, for example, if you closely look at this also, see, anti-epileptics used in the treatment of epilepsy, immunosuppressants are used in cases of, you know, organ uh, transplant and, you know, autoimmune diseases. Then you have calcium channel blockers, phenylalkylamine. So these are not closely related groups, right? They, they are completely different from each other. But why do you think this dissimilar drug cause a similar side effect? There should be something in common, right? So all of these, they have, okay, so all of these, when you look at them at a cellular level, they act at the calcium and sodium influx channel. So which makes what? this one of the potent pathological factors. Now, what are the other ways by which these drugs cause gingival enlargement? Now, let's have a look into it. Okay. Now, what is gingiva made up of? You know, we are talking about increase in the size of the gingiva. So, you should know what it is made up of, right? Forget about gingiva. Now, what, what determines the size of anything? Okay. Yeah. So what it is made up of only, right? So here gingiva is made up of three things. Cells, intracellular substance, and your vascular supply. Now increase in one of these or increase in all in total would contribute to your gingival enlargement. Now which is the principal cell of your gingiva? In the epithelium, you have keratinocytes, non-keratinocytes. In your connective tissue, you have fibroblasts. So these drugs act on fibroblasts. Now how do they act? They have two kinds of effect. One is direct, the other one is indirect. Now, fibroblast, surprisingly, doesn't have its own matrix a lot. What it does is it produces matrix, both collagenous and non-collagenous. Now, these drugs, they act by increasing this secretion. So how does it happen? Each drug has its own type. You, you just need to remember the uh, side headings. You need not go into the depth. In case of phenytoin, there is folic acid depletion. In case of cyclosporin, there is increased GAGs. And in case of nifedipine, there in case of nifedipine, there is increased heparin levels. So all these three, they cause increase in the collagenous matrix, which directly affects the fibroblast. Next is by disrupting the homeostasis, which means 
see your body is in a continuous equilibrium you're not doing anything but still there is cell turn- turnover which is happening you know the wound healing happens because your body is in a continuous state of homeostasis there is cell production there is cell apoptosis which is occurring in a sink now these drugs they break that sink how can they do that either they increase the proliferation or they decrease the collagen degradation now how do they increase the proliferation see for any substance to grow the environment should be you know facilitative or they should you know help uh, the substance to grow similarly your fibroblast would proliferate when there are increased molecules like you know certain molecules called as cytokines interleukins one beta so all these molecules when they increase they create an environment which is so favorable for fibroblast to proliferate so increase in the fibroblast increase in the gingival uh, you know size which is nothing but enlargement now next it can reduce the degradation now degradation of collagen occurs in two pathways i'm not going into the detail just remember there are two one is extracellular and the one is intracellular extracellular means outside the cell you need something outside the cell that is collagenase which breaks down the collagen so extracellular pathway is linked with collagen intracellular is within the cell or by the cell itself what does a cell undergo is a programmed apoptosis so they affect these two which in turn increases the fibroblast in your gingiva what are the other things are these now here i have highlighted one this is something that you have to know uh, this is a very important viva question also something called as emt now this is a very unique feature what gingiva has um, your epithelial cells you know under um, certain conditions they turn into mesenchymal cells now this process you know it was for wound healing or you know for basic physiological process but under certain condition they become pathological in cases of uh, uh, you know tumors or certain drug induced in gingival enlargement here all your epithelial cells they get converted into mesenchymal cells which increases the number of cells thereby contributing to the gingival enlargement so let us have a quick recap what did we see we saw that you know all other different group of drugs were causing one similar side effect now why were they causing because at uh, you know they were ha- literally having a vast pharmacological diversity but there was one common factor that all of those were o- acting on the calcium and sodium channels so that is why that is the number one pathological factor but apart from that uh-huh. which are the principal cells we have fibroblast so how do they act direct and indirect method so direct is by affecting the production of collagen indirect is by degradation of the collagen and emt is something what you have to remember for your viva now the last part is the treatment now for the treatment i don't want to you know just tell it i want to show you a case which was done in our department i told something about interpatient and intrapatient right so now very common drugs which are prescribed especially amlodipine and every other hypertensive patient you will see but not every other hypertensive patient will have gingival enlargement because now there are um, certain factors you know genotypes means genetically determined cells which would cause gingival enlargement now this patient was on a long term um, calcium channel blocker you can see a proper growth so you can see this growth here right so what did we do first and foremost whenever the patient comes to period department what do they do what do what do you do imagine you're taking a case history or you have seen the patient what is the first thing that will come to your mind when you think about period writing the case report <laughs> okay so what do you do is we we first remove the local irritants right the first thing what we do is we have to get rid of the irritants you can see a lot of deposits right so we already know that this drug is bound to cause gingival enlargement in this patient okay in this patient per se but along with that you see the contributing factors right so first we'll get rid of it we know we can't do anything about the drug because if it was possible you could have spoken to the physician and you know asked for a substitution but maybe this drug works best for the patient so you can't do anything about it we'll learn how to manage it but apart from that we'll first and foremost take care of the contributing factors what you do is you do a thorough scaling and root planning next you recall the patient after a week or so 
depending on the deposits and the condition this patient was recalled after two weeks after two weeks we saw that there is uh, you know the patient is maintaining well no additional uh, you know mouth washes or mouth rinses were required so we directly went ahead with the removal of the excessive tissue now what is removal of the excessive tissue called here there is a growth so it is called as a biopsy but in general if you are removing a bulk of the gingiva what it is called gingivectomy Yes, it is called as gingivectomy. So what do you do in cases of gingival enlargement is one of the treatment is gingivectomy. Now, when to do gingivectomy and when to do, uh, you know, other kinds of treatment, we'll discuss it. So this is how the growth is being removed. And then the patient was kept on recall. And you can see the final picture. How yes. this case was managed. You can see the before and the after. So just by the growth removal, certain sites which were not responsive, you have just cleared it out. And this is how it looks. Here, the drug substitution is not done, but still you have controlled the overgrowth. That is the treatment part what you need to understand. As I told you that we cannot do anything about the drug, but we can understand how to prevent it. Now, everywhere in the textbook, you'll find that three-month interval is given. You already know that this drug is going to cause, but why are you waiting for three months? That is the amount of time that is required for the clinical features to present if the patient is susceptible to that drug. Not everyone will have that kind of representation. That is what is interpatient and intrapatient different. Inter is within the patient, intra is among a group of patients. 20 patients under the same group of drugs will have different presentation. A single patient also who is on the same drug for a good period amount of time, his first quadrant and the last quadrant will be completely different. So what you do is once you have waited for three months, you see the patient again, you'll see whether the patient has the gingival enlargement or not. If he doesn't have the gingival enlargement, you will teach him how to brush properly, how to maintain. And first and foremost thing, you will tell him that you have to come for the follow-up visit because, uh, you know, the moment you, you see the patient at the earliest is when you can treat the better. Next, when the patient comes to you after this three-month interval, you see that there is gingival enlargement. Now, you have already done scaling and root planing, right? So what extra can you do? You kind of, you know, give mouthwashes as an adjective to control the local factors. Okay, then you also look for, again, drug substitution if possible because it is not reducing with local management. Again, you recall the patient. Now, recalling the patient depends on what? Has anybody have any idea? Anything that you can remember about recall? When to recall the patient? Okay, there's something called as Merin's classification. We follow that to recall the patient. Now, after you have recalled the patient, you see whether um, you know the gingival overgrowth is reduced or not. If it is reduced, you keep the patient on follow-up. If there is still gingival overgrowth, now you check how severe it is. And depending on that, you would decide the treatment. Now, if... Uh, you know, there's only small teeth affected. Like say in the case what I showed you, there were only few areas like the third quadrant. You can you can see a popular growth there, right? So such uh, areas are there. You know, there, there's no much of um, bone loss and there's good amount of uh, keratinized tissue is when you're going to do gingivectomy. If you are removing a part of gingiva, whatever is remaining should be sufficient to maintain the harmony of the gingiva, right? So if all these factors are there, you go ahead with gingivectomy. Now, if you see, there's a lot of areas that have been affected and there is a lot of bony defect. Understand one thing, your gingiva is like a jelly. Okay, whatever is your bone structure, it is just going to land on it if your bone itself is not proper, it you know there's no point of whatever treatment you do to your gums. Like if you say gingivectomy when you already have a you know bony defect would not help. So what you do is you go ahead with the flap surgery. Now irrespective of uh, you know gingivectomy or flap surgery, remember one thing in your every surgical topic answer you have to write recall of the patient. Patient on maintenance phase is very, very important. So that is all about drug-induced gingival overgrowth. Now, this is a skeleton, what you have to write in your exam. And you can just elaborate it based on the number of marks it is asked for. Wait, there's more. But before we go further down the rabbit hole, subscribe to our channel.